In this episode of the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast, James and I, we are going to preview tonight's games. It is the Sweet 16, and we are going to talk about the top NBA prospects that will be playing in tonight and hoping to advance to the Elite Eight. We'll also do a recap. So stay tuned to hear our thoughts on some of the matchups we are looking forward to seeing tonight. Shout out to each and every person that has made the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast your first listen of the day. I'm your host, Rafael Barlow, the director of scouting for NBA Big Board. And my co-host is none other than my brother, James, who is the president of basketball operations at, at NBA Big Board. But before we get into this episode, I want to let you know that it is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 if your first bet wins. If you're not subscribed to the channel, like, share, comment, subscribe. Make sure you click the bell so you can be notified every time we post because we are bringing you NBA Draft content five days a week and draft season is heating up. It's right around the corner. Guys are signing with agencies from everything that I've been told around April 8th is when most of the top prospects will, will start their pre-draft process. So, so it's, it's go time. This is the time of year that I'm looking forward to, but let's talk about tonight's games. You have a good slate of games tonight. You have Clemson versus Arizona San Diego State and UConn in a rematch of the national championship game. You have Alabama and North Carolina playing in a a contrast of styles. And then you got Illinois and Iowa State. So first I want to talk about Arizona and Clemson. What are your thoughts on that matchup from an NBA draft perspective? Um, The guy that I'm looking at here is PJ Hall. Uh, The team has won their first two games and he's been limited by foul trouble. Yep, he hasn't so, really got got yeah, all. Yeah, he hasn't got loose. loose at all. It's 19 minutes round one, 20 minutes round two. Um, it'll be interesting to see uh the effect that he has on the game if he can stay out of foul trouble. Cause I know he's a a, a good defender on uh, stretch five and he does have some NBA buzz. So let's see if he can capitalize on that with a good showing today. Do you consider him a legit stretch five or are there some concerns about the shooting so he shot 37 percent from three last season and then this year it was at i'm sorry it was 39 percent 39.8 percent from three last year and then this year it was down to 32 percent now he is a, a good free throw shooter high 70s but over his career it's like 13 percent from three 30 percent 39 and then 32. So he's really had one strong year as far as being like an efficient shooter from deep. Is it fair to give him the stretch five label? It's fair to give him that label, but right now I, he might be a shooter that can kind of shoot. Um, Again, ultimately his, uh his NBA profile is going to come down to him stretching the floor. Yep. Uh, I don't, you know, I fives don't really have to shoot league average. I don't think. Yeah, just long as if you're if you can space the floor, you are a threat, and that that's fair. But I just I I see the stretch five tag, and I look at the numbers, and I and I think it's a lot of it is based off of how he shot the ball as a junior. Mm-hmm. But we're talking a guy that. It's a four-year senior, has over 332 career attempts from three, and he's at about 32 33% overall for those numbers. Now, I will say that he definitely improved. He, he was 13% as a, as a freshman, and I agree 100% that his NBA role or the, his NBA career, I think, is going to be based off of how well he does shoot the ball. But my question is, is it fair to label him as a stretch five? Because it's not like he's a freshman and shot 32% right. from three and showed flashes. I mean, he has a you know over 300-something attempts. So is it fair to label him a stretch five? 
I mean, that's the label we're going to have to give him. Is he, is he, he's a shooting five, but is he a making five is what we're going to have to figure out. What did uh, Jerry Sloan say a few a long time ago? He was like, I'm tired of shooting guards. I need a making guard. Because <laughs> that, that, that was the label you got. If you were a two, you were a shooting guard. <laughs> yeah, well, he needs to be a, a making stretch five because right now I, it's fair to say the jury is still out on him as a shooter. Yeah, I, I like him a lot. But I do have some concerns. I don't think he's a particularly strong rebounder. Average six no. rebounds per game at what six ten, six eleven. As far as like being a rim protector, I think the numbers are 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 decent. He's a uh, positional. He's got good instincts. Yeah, I would average. say he's not at the rim, but like he'll get stuff on the way up. Uh, he does a good job playing the passing lanes. It, rim protection is kind of overrated in a sense it's just one facet but yeah. uh, I think he does a good job of playing defense but uh, he's not the defender he's not strong enough a defender to excuse him of shooting 32 percent from three is what I'm trying to say yeah he's he's a prospect that I think is really good I mean he can score average 18 points a game he was efficient from the floor but I'm like, all right, what is the one skill set that he has to hang his hat on to have a long NBA career? And I think the tools are there, and I think he's close to having it. But mm -hmm. there there are a little bit of concerns of what happens if he's not like a really good shooter from three. And then it just kind of opens up a whole can of worms. The prospect that I'm actually looking forward to seeing the most in this game is Caleb Love. Why? Because Caleb Love is feast or famine. Caleb Love can give you 30 or he can get you 30 shots and 18 points. And I think – I don't think he's Arizona's best NBA prospect. I think he's their best player. Who's their best NBA prospect? I'm going to go with Larson. I agree. I'll go with Larson. Some people say it, it's, it's Keyshawn Johnson. I'm talking about Pellet Larson. I just think with Larson, he's able to do – so many things like he can shoot, he can pass. He, he's he's like the perfect like complimentary connective guy that I would want in in my in the back end of my rotation. But love is just interesting, man. I mean, not the most efficient guy, exudes confidence, never seen a shot he doesn't like, has the tools, he has good size, good athlete, can get hot. I think for him, a, a role as like a microwave scorer would be best suited for him. But the question is, like, what is he like? How is he going to get his points? He's had like three years below 40 percent efficiency, which is that's crazy. man. It's crazy. Then the three point shooting is, is streaky. I think he's in a weird position, man. I, I've talked about it on a, a previous podcast that he's a guy that. He could actually come back to school. And I don't even He's know. He's got if a COVID year? It. Yeah. He could actually come back to school. I don't know if that does him any good or improves his draft stock, but he had a career high 41% from the floor. Uh, he shot 32% from three as, as a sophomore. He's a good foul shooter, but he rebounds. I think he was Pac 12 player of the year, the last ever. So coming back to school, I don't know how much that would help him. I could see maybe a team signing him to a two-way, but then I could see him going to the G League and averaging 25 points per game, which absolutely, in my opinion, would do nothing for nothing him for as an NBA prospect because right. all he's going to do is play the same way that he has been playing, possibly. And, you know, unless the team says, all right, look, you're a guy that we can play you a few minutes per game with the second unit and get hot. But – He's just way too streaky. Like, like I said, he's feast or famine. Very, very interesting prospect. But he rebounds. He's got the, just, the tools. I just feel like there's just so many guys that are. It's just it's it's a ton of go get me twenty on twenty attempt guys out there in the world. Yep. You know, it's hard to make a living being that guy that's feast or famine. I would go back to school and try to catch it, catch it, catch another nil check if I was him. Because, uh, yeah, like you said, the, the G League is 
it's not going to translate for him because, again, he's going to go average 20 and it's going to be on 38% shooting and you're just doing it in the G League. So I agree with what you said about him. Yeah, unless he goes and shows a team like, okay, I, I can be a, a pure point guard, he's going to have to, like, change his mindset. But his mindset is that of an aggressive scorer. So it'll be interesting. All right, when we return, we're going to talk about the rematch from the national championship game last spring between UConn and San Diego State. A surprising game last last spring, but today it's a one versus five seed. But let's talk about Nissan because I want to know, are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? You ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Well, our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. And the Nissan Rogue, which is perfect for city drives and great escapes. It has class executive Google built in, which is always updating, and it is your assistant to call for almost anything. Gone are the days of connecting your phone with the Google Assistant, Google Maps, and Google Play Store. They're all built right in the 12.3-inch HD touchscreen infotainment system. And the 2024 Rogue is the perfect mid-size crossover for your next adventure. But Nissan's incredible lineup also includes the Nissan Pathfinder, which has room up to eight, an expansive cargo capacity, and advanced available 4x4 capability with 284 horsepower and up to 6,000 pounds of towing. When adventure calls, the Pathfinder is there to answer. So take the Nissan Rogue or the Nissan Pathfinder and go find your next adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you are going to want to have a Fire TV. And Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and, the, and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive in to all the game analysis, highlights, and more. So keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports, whether it's March Madness, NBA, Major League Baseball, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. All right, second segment. I want to talk about UConn versus San Diego State. Now, last year they met in the national championship game. It was, I, I guess you can consider it a blowout. If I remember correctly, it was at least a, a double-digit win for, for UConn. 17 but, point game. Was it? Yeah, it was 76 to 59. 76 to 59. Last year, San Diego State only had one scorer on the team average over double figures, and it was Matt Bradley. He averaged like 14 points per game. It's like they bullied and, and pounded their way through the season with a team of grown physical men. This year, the team is still playing the same way, not the exact same, but they have a go-to score in Jadon Ladee, who has been cooking. Yes. He's made 20 out of his 30 shots from three. I think he's shooting 100%. I'm not from three. 20 of his 30 shots from the floor, shooting like 100% from three, averaging 26 or 27 points per game. Nine free be, throw attempts per game. Well, he's getting to the line. He's definitely getting to the line. He is a problem. I talked about him on my article at NBABigBoard.com. I even talked about him in, in one of the, the previews that he's a, a guy that could carry a team deep into the tournament. I'm looking forward to this matchup with him and Donovan Klingon, who is putting an absolute lid on the rim. He's making it a no-fly zone around the hoop. But Ladee's a different 
monster. What What are your thoughts you on quick. this? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me ask you, because you've been team Donovan Klingon for a minute, and yeah. I know you're a J. Don D fan. How do you think this matchup is going to play out? I don't know, to be honest with you. I, I don't know. I think it can be... I think it can go a couple ways. I think for Ladee, it is like a huge, huge opportunity to show how good he really is. I mean, this is a, a guy that for like, what, four years was just kind of put in the box. Like, how do you have this much talent, this much game, and this much skill, and it's not recognized? Now, unless he just had like this outlier summer where he just added all this to his game, which I don't think is the case. I think he's had it. I just think that he's been misused. I mean, you look at him physically, you you know, he looks like a, a five, you know what I mean? But right. watch his game and you see he's got way more, way more game than, than just like a bruiser. I mean, he's drawing fouls. With all that being said, I could actually see this being a matchup where he gets clinging in foul trouble. And if he gets him in foul trouble, I mean, you kind of still good. I mean, they still got like this crazy deep team, but if he gets him in foul trouble early, it could really have an impact on the game because he's a guy that can foul out your front line. And the next thing you know, you got this guy that hasn't played much for you <laughs> coming in, having to play big minutes in a big game. Or you have, you know, somebody like Klingon late in the game who can't really play the way he wants to play on defense or be as aggressive because he doesn't want to foul out. So I could actually see that happening. And that is like my prediction. If I were to predict the outcome, I just think Ladie is going to get UConn's guys in foul trouble. Um, I will say Klingon hasn't been hacking as much as he was as a freshman. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how Ladee tests Klingon's mobility because it's not going to be a bunch of pick and roll action. I know he did a really good job Klingon uh in pick and roll against Northwestern. You know, I'm a boo booey fan, but like this is just gonna be like something he's probably never seen before. Like this is a five man that is a super strong cock diesel with that can handle the ball that's gonna be coming at you. So I don't know, man. I, th I think UConn wins. I don't think anybody can beat UConn. Like you said, they have too much depth. But I think this is a great opportunity for Jadon Liddy to to make a, a name for himself, make some money for himself as a, a potential two-way guy next year. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I think it would be crazy if he doesn't get a two-way. But, yeah, this is like an old-school matchup where, I mean, it's going to be arguably the best defender in college basketball going against an absolute monster that is going to attack him and, and bring it to him. And so I'm looking forward to seeing how Ladee does against length mm -hmm. because there are a lot of times where he initiates the contact. And when he initiates the contact, he kind of offsets length because yeah, by, the time he, yeah, by the time he puts that shoulder into you or attacks you, you're, you're like you said, cuts the tree down, but clinging is, I've seen him listed at 280, but I think he's lost some weight since the season. He's, I mean, that's that's a big tree, but we're talking about grown man strength, <laughs> like grown, grown man strength. Grown man strength. Against, you know, Klingon is, is, is a big dude, but also has great length. I'm also looking forward to seeing what Castle does. I don't think he's had like a crazy, like great breakout game yet, but I think for him. In the tournament or just in, the, in general? In the tournament, in okay. the tournament. He doesn't need to, and he, he may not even have one just because of, yeah, of UConn's team. roster. That team is good, man. Yeah, they're they're good, and I like the way they're built. I mean, you have, you know, a, a top recruit in, in Castle, but you have a team, like a team. You got a guy like Klingon who this is year two. I mean, they. I just like the way that they've built their roster. It's a combination of, like, five stars, NBA prospects, transfers, under the radar guys. I mean, if you, if you're gonna build a team in college basketball to compete, I think that is the route to go instead of just loading up on on big freshman. time freshmen. But yeah, yeah, I think for Castle, he's like one breakout game away from being like talked about as being top a top five player. Five. 
I've said it the whole year, man. He's a jump shot away from being best player in this draft. Yeah, one breakout, one breakout game away, and maybe maybe it's today. All right, when we return, we're going to wrap up this episode. We're going to talk about the next two games that will be played tonight, North Carolina and Alabama. I know Alabama's looking for a track meet. North Carolina's probably going to try to play down low. And then Illinois and Iowa State. Can anyone stop Terrence Shannon? Stay tuned. This next segment is brought to you by our sponsor, BetterHelp. Sometimes we all need the opportunity to get something off our chest. Big or small, certain things can really start to get to you, and it is very important to let that out, especially to someone who is unbiased in your life. And therapy, it can be for everyone. I mean, I know there's a stigma on therapy that you need to have a lot going on, you need to have problems, but therapy can be it can be there for everyone. Most of us have bigger problems than our favorite sports team. And it's very important to get things off your chest every once in a while. And if you are thinking of starting therapy, give better help a try. It is entirely online. It is designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. So visit betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA to get 10% off your first month. That's better H E L P.com slash locked on NBA. All right, last segment, number one, North Carolina versus number four seed, Alabama. Alabama likes to get up and down the court and run. North Carolina can run. They can play that pace, but they also have a couple bangers down low that want to slow the game up. Who is the NBA prospect in this game that, that you are monitoring? I would like to say I would love to see something from Grant Nelson. I don't know. It's not looking too good for him individually. He's not really having the season that I thought he would. But, you know, you brought up in the first segment, bucket gear, Caleb Love. I want to see what R.J. Davis does in this paced up matchup in a game that both teams should score 80 points. I know he's a small guard, small shooting guard, but – if Caleb Love could get an opportunity to play at the next level, I think R.J. Davis could too. I mean, I'll throw in another name, Mark Sears. Man, okay. Listen, listen to these numbers. I think he had one of the more underrated seasons in the country. I know, like, because he's 6'1", 185, he's not getting a lot of draft buzz. And I even blame myself. I should have been giving him more draft buzz this season. 21 points. Four rebounds, four assists, 50, 43, 85 shooting splits. 1.7 steals per game. Absolutely went off. So far, has been going off in the tournament. Had 26, 12 rebounds and six assists against Grand Canyon. And then in, against the College of Charleston in the first round, he had 30 points, five assists, four rebounds. Dude is good. He is someone that I think is, is being slept on. I know I've been sleeping on him. I apologize, Mark Sears, that this is the <laughs> first time I've talked about you all season long. I truly apologize because you you got game. You, you're a bucket getter. I've I've seen the Jalen Brunson comparisons as far is as this. Is it because he likes skin or is he plays like Jalen Brunson? I mean, you know, he's not like – beating you with like crazy athleticism. It's just buckets and craft undersized. Um, I, I like him. I, I think he's someone that's going to sneak up on people. Just, I don't even know how you can sneak up on people with his resume as far as what he's done. But I mean, just the improvements that he made this year, like he went from 12 points a game to 21, 40% field goal to 50, 34% from three to 43. I mean, he had a huge, huge, huge jump this season, and it's not being talked about enough. I mean, he transferred from Ohio a couple years ago. He's someone that I think people maybe that they, they may like really, really pay attention to how good he is in the NCAA tournament, and I think that's going to translate into a strong showing at the NBA Combine. Yeah, I, I understand. Um, I'm looking out for him. Like I said, I've seen his name come up a bunch. I haven't really dug into the film. It's going to be a good matchup because, again, he'll get R.J. Davis. You know, R.J. is 
His biggest knock is he's just he's a small dude. He's six foot one sixty. He's hard to make a living in the NBA. Wait, 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 wait. What? Six list foot him, what? Hey, they list him at six foot one sixty. And but at the same time, man, look, you want to talk about 21 points, three rebounds, three assists. It's, I got 180. I had to double check that. I got 180 man. on ESPN. We're gonna have to get it. We're gonna have to get the scale out at halftime because unless he's gained 20 pounds, the basketball reference lists him at 160. That, <laughs> that seems might... kind of light, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> that might have been his seven updated since his senior high school. Man, look, I, I got him at on ESPN six foot 180. <laughs> man, we got to get a consist consensus with these heights and these weights man because i've seen too many 20 pound 30 pound difference between one website versus another i don't yeah, like know. clinging he was 265 yeah. or one i've seen 280 but 160 i'm i i had to like verify that because that just sounds hey i looked like, at it too not you know i wait. thought i was because i was still on dubai time a little bit make sure that six wasn't an eight but it says 160 on there yeah. So, and any, another one we talked about, uh, Khalil Ware, there's like a 30 pound difference between what they list him at on one website and the school website. So, I don't know. But either way, RJ Davis is a small dude. And real quick, lastly, man, Elliot Cadeau, man, you know, I was really, really high on him. <laughs> but yeah, what was it like eight, 16, 18% from three, something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Man, let's, let's I thought move. he was a shooter. Like, I, mean, I thought he I didn't was. I think too. he was like lights out, but I mean, if you would have told me who would have the worst shooting splits as far as jumpers, Isaiah Collier, <laughs> Stefan Castle, or Elliot Cadeau, I would have thought, man, Cadeau is going to be the better shooter. But 16% from three and 65% from the foul line, and I'm even rounding that 65% up. Man, they guard him like Eric Snow, man. Let's talk about Iowa State real quick before we hold on. I want Harrison Ingram. Go you got to give Harrison Ingram oh, a shout man, out. I'm tripping. Ingram. Shout out to Eric Harrison. I think Harris. We talked about this offline. I think he has Royce O'Neal connectivity about him. Good defender. Uh, he rebounds. I think he's a good ball mover yep. as a role player. And we said we talked about it offline, but like him. Going from trying to be the man at Stanford to being a complimentary guy at North Carolina has done wonders for his draft stock. Yeah, you know, he he brings up or that brings up like a, a case. And I can say it was a similar thing with Jalen Tyson at Cal. It's like you went to two different schools and played two different games and you had a chance to show NBA scouts and pay not the most conventional way your whole skill set. Like Harrison went from like point forward at Stanford to uh, this complimentary rebounder that I mean, he averaged eight, like nine, re like a little under nine rebounds per game in North Carolina. But then in a reduced role, he shot like 38% from three, almost like 39 if you round it up. The question is, is he as good of a shooter as the numbers say? Because he's only 61% from the foul line. But that's crazy. But no, nah, man, I mean, he had a, a good game against Michigan State, 17 points, seven rebounds, had a steal. So I, I thought that he played well, and I think this is a, a good opportunity for him to showcase how talented he is because I think there may be a time where he'll have to showcase the the, the passing. All right, Iowa State, you're an Iowa State alum. I'm picking Iowa State. All right. Can they stop <laughs> – the hottest man in college basketball as far as scoring outside of Ladee. I mean, you got Terrence Shannon who had 102 points in the Big Ten tournament, and then he had, what, 30 and 26 or 30 and 28 in the first two rounds. Can they slow him down? I I don't know, man. I usually try to lean towards the better offense being the better defense. I know uh, – what's that guy's name? Ken Palm, the the, rank, the rating system. I, I know Illinois has the number one offense, and Iowa State has, like, the number one defense. So it will be interesting to see how this this goes. I can't root against uh, Iowa State, but I can give you a couple names from some dudes from D.C. doing their thing. Uh, but, yeah, Terrence Shannon is on a tear, man. And we'll, we'll see. But what do you think is going to happen? I don't know if they can stop him. I'm going to read these last – Five games for Terrence Shannon, 30 points, 26 points, 34 points, 40 points, 28 points. 
I mean, he is blazing fast. He is shooting the three at a respectable level. He rebounds. I mean, you can make a case and say outside of Zach Eady, he is the best college player this season. Yeah. I mean, he's missed some games, but 23 points, four rebounds, 48% from the floor, 36% from three. He's had a phenomenal season. I know he's got the the cases pending, but we don't want to talk about that. But I, I, I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with, I know you're an Iowa State alum. I'm going to go with Terrence Shannon getting 35 in Iowa State losing to Illinois. But I could also see this being the game where Shannon's hot streak comes to like a screeching halt and he has like, you know, a a rough shooting night. I wonder if they're going to put Taman Lipsy Beverly on him. (laughs) Alvarado. Yeah. Taman Lipsy Beverly Alvarado. Yeah. (laughs) Lipsy Alvarado. (laughs) (laughs) What's Devon Carter? Yeah. Javon Carter. Yeah. An irritant with ninja hand. He gets, if he gets his hand on it, it's a steal. Well, that wraps up this episode. In the next episode, James and I, we are going to talk about Maras Bazelis calling out Zachary Risa Shea. I actually like that. I was on the plane and I had the Wi-Fi, so I was able to debate and talk with people all day about it. But I actually like Maras calling him out. I I like it. We'll, We'll get more into that in the next episode. And then there will be a recap of tonight's games. Once again, it's Raphael Barlow with my brother James Barlow. And we are out.